and welcome to HITC Sport and you know what day it is today lads, St. Paddy's Day. The day when us Irish people can sweep our alcoholism under the carpet and down three bottles of Jameson without banning a f***ing eyelid. Of course the next morning we won't have a, an excuse for pouring vodka into our bowl of shreddies. So then it'll be back to a good old cry in the shower. Well I have another reason for weeping in the shower this week and I'm not talking about my career choices or the fact that my Jack Greenish video was deleted. Declan Rice wins Irish Young Player of the Award despite the claim for England. Are we serious? Have the FA not made a complete mockery of our national team enough? I mean, don't forget, this is the same organisation who had the brilliant idea of hiring Mick McCarthy and then immediately choosing his successor. Which is a bit like marrying someone and then 20 minutes into the honeymoon, slipping the hotel receptionist your number for once this whole thing goes to shit. But jeez lads, I thought it was bad enough to wish this fella a happy birthday when he decided that he needed to think things over. Now we're actually giving him the Irish Young Player of the Year award 48 hours before he was called up to the f***ing England squad. Why don't we just bend over and give back to 26 counties? Look, Rice made his choice, alright? He'd rather toss away potential international captaincy to become the next Danny Drinkwater, i.e. six caps before vanishing into f***ing obscurity. Like why are we giving him awards? There are thousands of Irish kids who would kill for that award. I mean this award is probably going to take pride of place down the back of Rice's f***ing couch. Like is this all it takes to win? Play three goddamn games. Just have a revote. Like change the decision. Give the award to your f***ing dog. Just anything. Don't give it to Declan Rice. And especially not right before he gets called up by Karen Southgate. Jesus Christ, it's like breaking up with your missus and then three weeks later, sending her a bunch of flowers in the post. 20 minutes before she's supposed to go on a date with that beefcake from down the gym. That she made her f***ing choice. Not only is she going to cut the things up into goddamn mulch, you'd be lucky if she doesn't call the f***ing police. It's all a bit clingy from the FAI. Uh, as is me making three goddamn videos on the topic. But yeah, England calling off the Irish. Young player of the year, Christ above. I wouldn't be surprised to see you try and claim Katie Taylor after this weekend. Although, wouldn't be the first time. One of the performances of the night. Yeah, world champion. Britain has another world champion, Katie Taylor. Is she mental? Now you might wonder. Hey Irish guy, why are you so worried about Declan Rice? He's going to sit on our bench, seeing about as much action as Heavy D in a nightclub. Is your Irish squad so bad you need to cry over our reserves? Yes. Yes, have you not seen it? Let me just show you some of the names that we've just called up. Connor Hurahan, Enda Stevens, James Collins, Glenn f***ing Whelan. Oh yeah, he's back. We thought we'd seen the last of him, but no. Like a case of genital warts, he keeps rearing his ugly head. Sorry Glenn, that wasn't a personal thing. I I'm sure you're a handsome man in your own right, just... Y you can't play football for shit. <laughs> anyway, this video is not a, a total rice rant. It's actually going to be a video about managers. So let's just crack on with this. So what else happened? Yeah, Darren Moore was sacked by West Brom. Which confused me greatly because they were fourth. I'm, I'm, I just, I don't understand that one. I genuinely thought he was going to get the baggage promoted. Through the playoffs, but still, like, they were doing well. Chief Executive Mark Jenkins said, This has been an enormously difficult decision for a club which will always hold Darren in such high regard. But we've made it clear from the outset that everything this season was geared to making a swift return to the Premier League as possible. Unfortunately, Darren has not been able to engineer the consistency of form and results to convince the board that this objective would be met. Consistency. Right, here's a stat for you. West Brom have lost three games this New Year's Day, all of them to teams in the top six. Before that, they had a few defeats coming just across two weeks at the back end of October. And before that, they hadn't lost since August. So, I mean, that seems pretty consistent to me. We factor in the fact that the man has won 17 games a season, including a 4-3 win at Norwich, a 4-1 win over Leeds, and a 2-1 win at Bramall Lane. And let's not forget the fact he put 7 past Steve McLaren. So he's doing a pretty good job. But you know what this is? This is just an ownership who are waiting, praying for any excuse to get rid of this managerial nobody so that they could bring in an actual name that might excite them. That they could brag over at cocktail parties. So at business functions, they could wax lyrical about owning a club that was being steered by someone a bit more high profile than, than you know, the lad who looks like a nightclub bouncer and played over 100 games for Turkey United. It's like, it's obvious they didn't want to give him the job in the first place, but they kind of had to. Because how could they not? I mean, stepping in at the back end of last season, after Alan Pardew effectively set fire to the fucking club, sending them off to get pissed, rob taxis, and lose eight games in a row, Moore won at Old Trafford, drew at Liverpool, beat Newcastle and Spurs. He actually somehow managed to get that West Brom team to go down with a little bit of dignity. It would be a bit like if Scott Parker went, managed to do something similar. The Cairns would have to give him the job, even if they'd rather staple their ball sack to the fridge. Like when Di Matteo won the Champions League. Like, of course, Abramovich was delighted in Munich, but, um... Yeah, it was only when he got back to the hotel room that night he probably thought, Oh shit! Now I have to give him the f***ing job! Like, sackings have just become so commonplace in football, like... He was fourth! Paul Scholes appointed manager of League 2's Oldham Athletic. I couldn't be happier at the minute. 
It's been a while. Obviously, there's been talk of it when I finished my career. It wasn't something I was ready to do, and there's obviously been three or four times over the last six years where it could have happened, and I've not been quite ready. But now I feel, I hope, the time is right to give it a go, and hopefully we can be successful together. So I guess he still just is, isn't ready. He sounds like a 16 year old who's funny stuck his dick in something that wasn't the f***ing Hoover. Although it looks like he's bit off a bit more than he could chew with Oldham. Like we all know Skulls was a great player. As a pundit he reminded me of a grumpy old man who spent 16 hours a day sitting down and moaning about the youth of today. Clearly this bundle of enthusiasm didn't translate into management. 31 days. Like he lasted 31 days on that job. Christ above, I've had tugs in the shower that have lasted longer than that. The owner, Abdullah Limsagam, said he was surprised, but that Skulls have resigned on what's happened had just refused to discuss it. Which is essentially like being dumped by text and just getting voicemail whenever you try and find out the reason why. Something Katy Perry knows a thing or two about. But I think this is called the Soul Campbell Syndrome. I mean... I, I think it's called that. I, I mean, it's not called that. I mean, I've just made it up, but hear me out on this. You get a fellow who's been pampered and preened at the top level for 20 years, and then suddenly he gets chucked into the lower league. It's like being torn out of his mother's warm, cozy vagina and thrust into the doctor's office. The kid's gonna be crying, screaming, begging for the doctor to put him back in. It's a culture shock. Suddenly, the once pristine five-star bathrooms, who probably employ their own butler to wipe your Nurse. Are instead overflowing, clogged up, and smelling of piss, vomit, and League One peasants. Suddenly, the once immaculate pitches, which felt like a velvety red carpet beneath your feet, is just a, a clumpy, muddy bog with more holes in it than Jerry McCann's alibi. Suddenly, the players who could once trap a ball in an instant and finish it with their next touch play like a bunch of stumbling drunks staggering on their way back from the fucking pub. Campbell was gone from Nos County after one game, and Scholes, seven. As Zinedine Zidane has returned to Real Madrid. Why? Jesus Christ, Zidane, you've always had a knack for leaving at, at the right time. Like your playing career, your last game in football was a goddamn World Cup final. I mean, there is no higher stage than that. And it's a good job you did retire because you effectively avoided a nine month ban. <laughs> then you walked out on Real Madrid last year after winning your third Champions League as a manager. I mean, yeah, you knew Ronaldo was off. It was an aging team. You could smell disaster was looming. Well done again, walk you off in the sunset, hailed as a hero. Brilliant. So why are you going back? Christ above. It's like a guy who notices that his wife is beginning to down whiskey every second night and, and just gorging herself on melted boxes of ice cream. So he walks. I mean, escaping what would be the inevitable breakdown of their marriage. And then, nine months later, when said woman is now living on the streets, stealing from pensioners and injecting heroin into her f***ing arms, he takes her back. For Christ's sake, Zidane, they're still playing f***ing Benzema up front. A centre back is their third top scorer. Don't go back, Zidane. <laughs> Alright, now finally, let's talk about the Champions League draw. Liberal fans have probably spent the week tossing themselves off in a public bathroom, getting drawn with Porto, the team he beat 5-0 away from home not 13 months ago. They're, they're obviously going to win that one. Juventus versus Ajax again. Juventus must be delighted. But settle down lads, not only are Ajax scoring goals for fun, I mean 88 goals in 25 league games is just ridiculous, although they're not even top of the league, but they've also stuck four past Bayern Munich and five past Real Madrid this season. I just be wary of them you babe, that's all I'm saying. Barcelona are gonna bring up all sorts of nightmares for Man United fans, still in weekly therapy after what Lionel Messi did to their defence all those years ago. Uh, the bad news lads, uh, Messi hasn't gotten much worse since then and your defence kind of has. And finally, Spurs versus Man City, the only two teams left in the competition who haven't won this competition. Uh, but let's just take a minute here, lads. Let's go back nine years ago to when these two were squabbling over fourth when Peter Crouch's header kicked City into the Europa League. But let's go back even further, 2004, when City came from 3-0 down to knock Spurs out of the FA Cup at White Hart Lane. Did anyone think this would one day become a Champions League quarter final? It's mental, like literally. Watford beat Crystal Palace yesterday, all right? I mean, that could be a Champions League quarterfinal. Like, if, if City Spurs turn into one, oh, like, genuinely, what's football gonna look like in the next 15, 20 years? I think this is a mental tie. I mean, even just a decade ago, these two teams were mid-table. And before that, relegation scrap. Like, it's, it's mental. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today, lads. Oh yeah, Theo Walcott turned 30, 30 years old. It only feels like yesterday that he looked like a lost seven year old shoved into an oversized shirt. Thank Christ he was never allowed near the f***ing Neverland Ranch. Anyway, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the Champions League draw. Who do you think is gonna win? And um, yeah, Twitter and Instagram's there. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.